Look at that. It's already drifting. Already drifting. Already drifting. Look at that. It's just drifting right and left. Wow. Crash. Look, still drifting, still drifting, now rolling. All right, welcome back. So today we're gonna recap what happened with the weekend and running the Mojave. Went over all the footage, I did a lot of passes on uh, on the Mojave this weekend. A lot of, lot of crashes, a lot of rolls. And that's one of the reasons I chose the Mojave because I didn't have one thing break on the car itself. Um, but I wanted to go over a few things. So I uh, got it back to the house, got it all cleaned up, looked over everything. And uh, first time when we came back, and uh, I went from the earplug center diff to uh, changing some fluids. I, uh, I noticed that uh, this stuff, I don't know if it's fishing line or, or what it was, but it's some sort of, uh, it looks like fishing line, was wrapped around one of the wheels. So I was like, well, that's not good because that'll cause one wheel to drag and um, it could cause the car to drift so i set up some differentials as you guys saw in the last video um and we got all the way down to 100k in the center diff which is you know pretty light i feel uh, from front to rear so um it's actually you know, even driving it here, you know, it, it's, it's, it's pretty light fluid. So, um, I do have a bent axle. The right front axle is bent, is tweaked, uh, probably from all the crashes. So I'm going to pop that out and, uh, and hammer that thing straight. Um, the bad part about these chassis, which is the back part on crashes on top of the body sitting here on the center brace, don't remove this brace. Whatever you do, this helps save the body on the Mojave and it and it ties the whole chassis together. So definitely don't lose this thing. I, I, I've seen in the past people have, have removed these. Don't remove them. It's not worth it. Um, it's better to have this center support here. But the rear chassis brace, because it's like a limitless and long in the rear, um, they tend to bend. And with this wheelie bar back here, you really got to support this. So I got an aluminum brace back here. And, uh, and as you see, the chassis is not bending at all. With all that said, uh, why is this thing drifting um, to one side? And it's not like it's always drifting right or always drifting left. It literally will start this wiggle back and forth in the dirt. And you just cannot get it under control. Um, it's, it's not my suspension. I've already been through the suspension. Um, and this car, you know, on the new method rc wheels um i did hose them off that's why they're a little damp right now i don't soak them i just i rinse them off i wash off all the dirt but on these method rc wheels um on our first pass on the grass which i did two or three runs it went uh it went uh 70 mile an hour every pass straight as can be on grass and then uh 
we ended up going a 73 that was probably on grass too um because on dirt as soon as i went over to dirt with these things um it, it's all over the place um two reasons for that one is the sidewall here the sidewall super look at this you see the flat spot in that um this tire's literally got a flat spot in it um just from sitting for a day in the trunk but one of the tires have got a huge flat spot in it so that's one issue um but the sidewalls the sidewalls are just they're super what happens is it gets on the ground and it does this does this wiggle like this in the dirt and with this thing not having traction i mean it just it slides back and forth on the dirt um and you can see the huge flat spot in that thing and these things like i said most of my speed cars i come back i always pull the wheels off this sat on the trunk on the ride home and uh you know i noticed that one and this one these two which were on the front have got huge flat spots in them uh, just from sitting so um, I've talked about uh, speed runs and the stretch of a tire rubber tires have only got so many so many times they can expand and because you know they're belted but these are only belted you know at the tread part I, I saw the belt from the inside before I glued them but the sidewall literally doesn't have uh, any belts <laughs> you can hear the air because I taped them but it uh, it literally doesn't have any belt on the side so these are still going to grow a little and when they grow at speed they can only stretch so many times before it gets a funny stretch in a certain spot on the wheel and uh, I've talked about that before because of hoons hoons on my 100 mile i 120 130 mile an hour i can get 10 passes out of these things running at 100 miles an hour i can get 30 passes out of them so i can stretch them a little bit running somewhere around 100 110 100 you know 15 112 101 i get about 30 when i start running 120 15 runs running or yeah running 120 miles an hour i get 15 runs running 100 mile an hour i get 30 runs running 130 miles an hour i get 10 runs out of a set of tires um they won't go past 130 miles an hour i i mean i've done it 132 133 but i end up up with blowouts constantly and these will stretch once you've done that amount of runs on on these rubber tires um they literally will give way and then you know you're say 35 runs into it at 100 miles an hour and all of a sudden you have a blowout and that's because the rubber gets soft gets stretched and uh, they start coming apart so i've explained the rubber tire deal um unlike foams foams you can keep running them until they start chunking. Once they start chunking on the side, they're no good. And what I found with foams is when I'm pushing it and the car's drifting, it chunks these edges pretty good. Now, if you had a tire mach uh, uh, machine to cut down the foams, you can recut them a little smaller and continue running them. But I've noticed once they've chunked, that chunk section, the glue is a little weak there. And they'll start chunking more and more and more until you get big chunks coming out of the foam tires. So uh, when I see a foam tire start to chunk, I won't put it on my fastest car. And the only time I run foams is when I'm 100, you know, when I'm pushing the RC, trying to go for 130 miles an hour plus. So with all that said, I feel we have a bad tire issue um, with this, that those new method rc tires that i got the sidewalls are now no good
after you know less than 10 runs on them um, the rubber because they're so soft and this is probably the softest belt the tire I've ever felt they were soft right out of the box look at that so you could push it right and left on this it literally look at how soft that sidewall is and because of that because because it's doing the wiggle on the sidewall it's causing the RC to wiggle and uh, you can't in a speed run you can't recover from that um, and the clear video for me was the thing started drifting 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 I let completely off the trigger didn't hit brakes anything and the RC was still drifting, 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 drifting. It was a perfect drift. Look at that. And all it was doing was a neutral roll. And then it finally got straight and went back the other way. And did the little wiggle. And I wasn't even on power. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Like, there's no traction with those things. On top of no traction, the soft sidewall is causing a bad wiggle with the RC. And you just can't have that. What do I do from here? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do from here. Um, I'm going to start taking out this axle because this axle's bent. What I'm going to do from here is I'm going to put on a set of foams. We're going to go run it on grass and probably dirt with a set of foams. Now, because of the height difference between the foams and these tires, I'm going to probably have to gear up. But I'm not going to gear up until uh, until I know the foams are going to work on dirt. Now, the factory tires, the sidewall of these compared to these is huge. This has got a really stiff sidewall. They're just not belted. The stock tires feel way better than these mushy tires. And these are belted. So, for now, um, until I decide what I'm going to do with tires, I'm going to run a set of rubber tires, some hoons on grass and dirt, and see if I can get these things to hook up. And I'm going to run a set of foams on dirt and grass and see if I can get them to hook up. Um, they should do okay, as long as the grass isn't wet. Um, they should do okay. Um... I think the hoons will do pretty good in dirt. I even think the foams will do pretty good in dirt. Um, we've been to the salt flats before uh, with a two-wheel drive slash, and we found that foams on the salt flats do really well. Um, and salt flats aren't like pavement. Um, everybody thinks the salt flats are perfectly smooth. They're not. There's big cracks everywhere. The surface is very uneven. For a car, it's pretty flat and straight. You really don't feel it. Um, but for an RC car, those little crevices and cracks that are all across the salt are like speed bumps. Um, so it's like going through whoop de doos um, on the salt flats. So with all that said, that's our plan. I'm going to go ahead and get this thing out. We're going to go ahead and run it on, uh, on some... Uh, some foams and some rubber hoons because I know both of those will do over 100 miles an hour. So I'm going to try to at least do that for now until I can figure out a, a tire choice that's belted that doesn't have a big sidewall. Now some people were saying get the guitars. I think that's the way it's pronounced. Guitars or whatever it is. Um, I have a set of those. That I ran on my Creighton. Not a huge fan of them. Um, but they work okay. But they're just like the Method RC. A pretty soft sidewall. Not as soft. But they are a soft sidewall. So. Um, I might stick on the guitars and try it. I just don't think it's. Uh, it's really going to do much. Honestly. And that's just. From past experiences. Is that uh, I think that's where everybody's limited and if off-road speed runs were easy everybody would be over a hundred miles an hour or done a hundred mile an hour run especially with a short course truck so 
Um, definitely not giving up because that's just not in my nature. And I knew this was going to be tough before I started doing it. But that's what it's about. Is, uh, is trying to do these, uh, the impossible tasks. You know what I mean? Wow, am I really going to have to take all of this off? Oh, this bottom one is, uh, is starting to pull out. Yeah, the red cap's gone too. That's weird. So this took a big hit to this corner. So I'm going to have to throw a washer behind this. But that bottom one is definitely, definitely about to come out. So this axle is pretty bent. And it's bent right up here. So I'm going to hammer this thing straight. Let me hammer it straight. I'll be right back. All right. So went ahead and got the axle straightened out. It was bent like right at this, uh, this knuckle thing up here. So now we got to get this thing in here. Our pin. shot I should probably check these bearings especially these inners that are really tiny this one's no good listen to that this is a I want to say a shielded bearing yeah so it just needs to be soaked in oil should have some of those bearings. It's just a standard, standard bearing. That's got to be the wrong pin. Gotta be the other pin for this. There we go. That feels much better. The one pin is just slightly longer. There we go. That feels better. Let me check this bearing. The outer bearing's good. So we're gonna roll with that bearing. tighten these things up I always stick it into a rim because that way the pin is in the right spot and I can just tighten it down there we go so I got to find a washer for this bottom control arm so that I can get that back together and then like I said we're gonna get out We're gonna get out and uh, definitely uh, run it on some foams and run it on some hoons and go from there. But figured I'd give my insight. Um, some people, and that's another thing. Some people were saying, take fishing line and fishing line it and run it. That's already proven not to work. Um, you guys have watched Kevin Talbert's videos. Everybody saw what he used fishing line on the Italian or the Typhoon. When he was trying speed runs across the grass 
fishing line kept snapping. You wrap this in fishing line, no matter how tight you get it, when this tire squishes down, guess what? That fishing line's coming loose and coming off. You can't make the fishing line strong enough to stay on these tires. And I'm not going to sit there and fight with uh, tying little knots and fishing line onto these uh, tires and then go out and make one pass and, the, and I got fishing line breaking everywhere. Plus the fishing line ends up like this. It ends up all over the place, wrapped around axles, all, the, all kinds of other stuff. It, it's no fishing line. That's not going to happen. But there we go. Um, a lot of suggestions. I don't mind the suggestions. Um, but um, doing stuff that other YouTubers have already failed on, I'm not going to follow their lead. If I was, I'd be running a snowboard um, with some motors on it and try to bust off 100 miles an hour. with my $10,000 snowboard. Um, I'm just, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take a ready to run, do a hundred miles an hour and a short course truck, which was, which is one of the worst RCs to try to do a speed run with, but I feel I can do it. And it's a challenge and I love challenges. So, um, I'm going to keep pushing, keep making changes to this until I'm able to do it, find a location that I can do it, find a, you know, grass or dirt area that I can do it. I am going to take it to the salt flats, talk to my buddy of mine. We are going to head out to the salt flats. I might even go tomorrow on Tuesday. And if I do, you guys will see video footage of that. But out of the salt flats, I'm going to run foams or I'm going to run hoons. And uh, I'm going to try to gear this thing up. I don't know, I don't know how much gears I have for this motor uh, because most of my tall gearing is for an 8mm shaft and this is a 5mm shaft. So I think 34 is as big as I can go with that. Um, but we'll see, you know, uh, I might have to order some more gearing um, because this gearing right now should be somewhere around, a, you know, I know it's over 100, should be somewhere around 120 miles an hour. But there we go. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm here pushing. Here's the aftermath. Here's what I'm doing. We're going to get that 100 mile an hour. I'm not going to push it to 70, 80 every time if the car's not stable. So there we go. We'll catch you on my next video. Thanks for watching.